Three charged objects are arranged such that object A has a charge of plus six microcoulombs and is located four centimeters to the left of object B, which has a charge of minus three microcoulombs. A third charge of plus 1.5 microcoulombs, object C, is found three centimeters below object A and perpendicular to B. What force does A feel? Whew, all right, that was a long one even just to write out. Uh, this is going to be our first two-page uh, video here, so we're at a real milestone. Um, this is another example of a Coulomb's Law type uh, question. And so this one's a little bit harder than the last one, quite a bit harder, to be honest, since this has three objects in it as opposed to only two. Uh, that's not as bad as you might think, but you're going to have to recall your vector addition here as well. So let's recall what Coulomb's law is. How do we figure out these forces? Well, force is K Q1, Q2, all over R squared, according to Coulomb. Uh, remember that this is uh, very similar to gravity in that it takes the two objects, in this case charge, times it by uh, a constant, which basically tells us how strong the force is, and then divides it by r squared, which tells us that the force drops off uh, in a squared fashion the further apart you get, which really just means uh, the force gets much weaker, uh, much quicker in terms of uh, the distance uh, apart. So uh, that's Coulomb's law. Again, we'll recall that k is 9.0 times 10 to the positive 9 uh, newtons meters squared per coulomb squared. That is uh, quite a big number, especially when we compare it to gravity. Uh, and this is why this force uh, dominates most of uh, your everyday life. I know you probably think you're more familiar with gravity because you throw things up and it falls back down and you stick to the floor, floor and all those sort of things. And you think, well, this is much more esoteric charges of coulombs and all this stuff. And you're right in that sense. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, this is the force that actually keeps uh, your atoms together. It's that keeps your molecules together. So basically why you don't fall apart, uh, why you can you know, have all your pieces stick together is because of this force. It's the same force that when you rub a balloon on your head uh, and then you're able to stick it to the wall, you've beaten gravity there already. And so it's much, much, much stronger than gravity. And this uh, number here, this Coulomb's constant or the electrostatic constant um, just tells us that much stronger uh, than gravity. And then R squared, of course, is the distance uh, between the two objects squared. Now, this question has three objects, not uh, just two. So we have one and two, maybe A and B, but um, we, we don't have any place for an object C here. So what we're going to have to do is solve this uh, problem twice. So let's take a look at the setup. If we have object A, and it says it's four centimeters to the left of object B, which is a negative object, so I'm denoting it that way. We'll put that there. That's more than four centimeters, but that's okay. This is just a representation. And then it says three centimeters below, so a little bit closer, is object C. So that's the arrangement here. Now, what makes this uh, more difficult than uh, just a simple question when there's only two things is that there's two forces on A. So we could ask this question about uh, object B or object C if we wanted to, um, with the exact same uh, numbers up there, we'd just be saying, okay, well, how, how much force is A putting on B and how much force is C putting on B? In this case, though, we're asking about A, so we want to know um, what's the force that B is putting on A and what's the force that C is putting on A. So let's think about that for a second. A and B are opposites in that A is uh, a, a positive charge, whereas B is a negative charge. And so if we recall uh, about uh, the, the rules of electrostatics is that opposites attract. And so we know then that there will be some force this way on A from B. So we'll call that force FAB. So we know that B is sort of pulling it this way. Uh, you can think of this like um, a, a crate back in the uh, force unit. Uh, maybe you've done this where someone pushes or pulls to the east and then we're going to look there's going to be another uh, uh, force here where we have A and C both positive and remember that positives repel and so we know that there will be some force AC uh, in that direction and if you recall from your vector addition that then we're going to need to uh, make something that is 
in the middle here, which is uh, what the force uh, on A will actually feel. And if it's going to move, that's the direction it's uh, going to go in. So how do we figure out how big uh, the force on A from B is and how big the force on A from C is now that we have an idea about how they're, uh, or what direction they're going to be pushing in? Well, this is where we will use uh, Coulomb's law again. We will put in um, the charge of A and B and the, the distance between them, work out the force, and then that will give us this arrow. And then we will do the same thing for A and C. That will give us this arrow. And then we'll use uh, vector addition and trigonometry to figure out the resultant uh, uh, force here, uh, which is the overall. So again, you can think of this uh, where we have to do a bit of math uh, with Coulomb's law to get these force numbers, but this is the same as um, when you probably did some questions where someone pulls on a crate to the north and someone pushes on a crate to the east, what's the overall resultant force? That's all this uh, becomes uh, in the end. So this is the electrostatic part, but once we get those two arrows, it's just vector addition as uh, we've done many, many times already uh, in this course. Okay, so page two, exciting here. So let's uh, solve this problem. So first off, we will find the force on uh, a from B, so we know that's going to be uh, attractive, so it's going to be moving this way. It's probably not a bad time to call this the uh, positive X axis and call this the Y axis, since we're going to need to uh, explain where this uh, purple arrow is pointing in the end. Uh, and so let's just list out what we have from the question. Now that the question's been, been erased, we still know K. That's given, or that's always going to be the case. We know that QA will be plus 6.0 microcoulombs. Uh, QB is going to be minus 3 microcoulombs. We know that object C is plus 1.5 microcoulombs. We know R for A and B, the distance between them is four centimeters. And we know the distance between A and C is three centimeters. So we're gonna actually put those in if we want now. And for A and B, it's four centimeters. So which force is going to be bigger? That's a question you might want to ask yourself right now. Is so the way I've drawn my arrows, it's hard to tell. Um, A is closer to C. Uh, it's three centimeters away. Not much difference than four centimeters. But C is also quite a bit small. It's half the size. Anyway, it's a different sign, but half the size of B. So you might say, well, B is going to be much stronger then since it's only a little bit further away but uh, it's got double the charge, um, but we'll see because the one over R squared does mean that uh, the distance apart makes a, a bigger difference than, than you sometimes think. So let's uh, solve for uh, A and B here. So we know this will be A moving that way. And so FAB will be, we're finding this arrow here, this, this polar push in this direction. Um, so FAB is KQA, QB, and again, the order does not matter of those two things. Um, I'm doing it because A follow, or B follows A, so why not A first? All over R squared for the distance between them. So note that C we're completely ignoring here for now. 9.0 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared times, oh, wait, we have a problem. Can I use plus six microcoulombs? No, I cannot. If you notice in the uh, K units here, it's in coulombs and in meters here, coulomb squared and meter squared. So centimeters and microcoulombs won't do. So if you're not familiar with micro, it means millionth. So what this really is, is plus six times 10 to the minus six coulombs, which means this is minus three times 10 to the minus six coulombs. This is something you'd have to look up or just become familiar with. It's like milli, only it's a millionth times 10 to the six. So we need these in coulombs because our K is in that. We could write K a different way, but we don't. We usually write it this way. And so we want our 
distances to be in um, meters and we want our charges to be in coulomb. So we recall that uh, centimeters one hundredth, so 4.0 times 10 to the minus two meters and 3.0 times 10 to the minus two meters. Now we're ready to uh, really put these, uh, these in. So just be careful with that, right? These things must be in coulombs and these things must be in meters because of the way uh, K is expressed. So if we're gonna use uh, nine times 10 to the minus nine Newton meters squared per coulomb squared, we must have coulombs and meters in our equation. So Q1 was plus six times 10 to the minus six coulombs times B is minus three times 10 to the minus six coulombs all divided by, in this case, we're only looking at the AB, 4.0 times 10 to the minus two meters, and we're gonna square that whole thing. So uh, note here that we have positive, positive, and a uh, negative here, which means we're gonna get a negative number on top divided by a positive number, which means our force in the end should be negative. And remember from the last example that when you get a negative force, it means that it's attractive, meaning that A is going to go towards B. So a negative answer will mean in this positive X direction here, the way we've defined X uh, uh, this way. So if we do uh, the math on top, uh, nine times 10 to the nine uh, times positive 6.0 times 10 to the minus six, times negative three, I get on top negative 0.162 Newton meters squared. And where that comes from is that cancels one of them, that cancels the other. And so there's my Newton meter squared and I'm gonna get meter squared here on the bottom. And so 4.0 times 10 to the minus two is, square that is 1.6 times 10 to the minus three meters squared. That cancels, that cancels. We're left with Newtons, which is what we want for a force. And I get minus 101 Newtons. Minus 101 Newtons. Uh, so around 100 Newtons, again, the nine, minus the negative sign here only means that it's going towards B. It's uh, giving us uh, a clue as to whether this is attractive or repulsive. It uh, doesn't mean anything else beyond that. So now we know the size of this arrow, and I will only write its size. We already have the arrow pointing that way. It's 101 Newtons. And so that is trying to pull this charge this way but we need to find uh, the force from C, which because these are both positive will be repulsive. So we do the exact same thing. We go through all this math again, and that's the tedious part of this. But uh, once you practice enough, uh, this becomes quite uh, um, straightforward. So we take our K again, K, Q, A again, because A is the one we're concerned with. We're asked about the force on A. We could easily do uh, B and C if we wanted to know the force there, but we're not asked about it, so we're not gonna bother. This time we're gonna do Q, C all over the distance between those two charges. And again, the question is just whatever you're being asked for. We could have asked for the force on B, so that would have meant A is pulling it this way and C is pulling it that way. A little more complicated, but uh, the same idea. So 9.0 times 10 to the nine Newton meters squared, Coulomb squared times plus six times 10 to the minus six Coulombs times in this case, positive 1.5 times 10 to the minus six Coulombs. I'll move my left hand all over now, not four, but three times 10 to the minus two meters and we'll square all that. So same idea with the units canceling. We get on top, this times this times this gives me 0 0.081 Newton meters squared and 3.0 times 10 to the minus two is 9.0 times 10 to the minus four meters squared, cancel, cancel. And we're left with a positive number now, but remember positive just means repulsive of 90 Newtons. So those were pretty close in terms of their size. P uh, positive again means that they're pushing away from each other. And we know from our diagram and how we thought this out that that means it's gonna go that way. So now we know this number as well. 
it is 90 newtons in the direction of the arrow. So those were pretty close. Uh, and again, note that even though the charge on Q was quite a bit less, was half of the size of B, because it's that, just that little bit closer, the, the forces turned out to be not so different uh, after all. So my arrows aren't too bad. So we have one more step to go, and that is to find out the size of the resultant arrow. So when this uh, is being pulled this way and pushed that way, um, where is it actually going to, to move and with what size? Well, we'll have to use our trigonometry uh, and vector addition to get that last, uh, last bit. So for this last bit, we're going to have to use uh, the Pythagorean theorem to get this, which I will call R, and we're also going to want the direction here. So uh, we'll say this is uh, above the, the x-axis when we find that, uh, that angle there. And since uh, I want to find the um, resultant here, I can do the tip-to-tail method of vector addition here so that we have a nice right angle triangle, which will then allow me to get, that's also 90 of course, uh, which will allow me to get the resultant here. So R will be the square root of 101 squared plus 90 squared. And I can put in that negative if I want, uh, but it doesn't, it's not gonna make a difference once you square it. And that gives me the square root, I hope I have room for this, 10, 201 plus 8,100, and those are Newton squared each. And so we add those up, we get 18, 301 Newton squared, right? Because I squared the number and the unit there, but I'm going to square root both, so I'll get Newtons back out. R then is... 135.3 newtons as our final answer in significant digits that'd be 140 newtons um but lastly we need a there's a size of our force here we now know this is then the force on a from both of these things will be 135.3 newtons and we need a direction here. And so because we know all three sides of this triangle now, we can use sine, cosine, or tan, take your, your favorite. Uh, but because I use the two sides here to get my R, I like to use them to get uh, the angle as well in case I made a mistake somewhere in here and that's a wrong number. Uh, so I usually use uh, tan theta will be opposite over adjacent. So that is 90 over 101 and note the units cancel here this is just a ratio and so that gives me 0.891 you should use more decimals than this though on your calculator and if we inverse tan that we get an angle of 41.7 degrees above the x axis. So our final answer then is what is the force uh, felt by A? The final force on A is 135.3 newtons, 41.7 degrees above the x axis.